All right, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is uh, 12 o'clock, and so we are going to go ahead and get started. My name is Andrew Schneck. I am the Digital Media Manager for Ameriserve Financial, and I'd like to welcome you to this next installment of our Ameriserve Presents webinar series. Today's session is the first in our four-part series that we're going to be doing throughout the month of August on banking basics. And we're happy to welcome our Senior Vice President of Retail Banking, Carrie Mueller, to join us as our featured presenter over the next four weeks. Uh, she's going to introduce us to some of the basic types of bank accounts that you're likely to encounter, as well as touch on things like budgeting, uh, credit and debt, and a lot more. So uh, just quickly, I'd like to mention that all attendees have been muted upon entering the session in order to avoid any kind of audio interference. If you have questions, we certainly invite you to share those with us in the chat. If you look at your lower right hand uh, portion of your screen, you'll find the chat button there and you can uh, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you can enter your questions there. I'll be monitoring that feed throughout Carrie's presentation and we'll have a Q&A session at the end. Uh, we promise to get to your questions at that time. One other quick note is that we are recording this session. So uh, just uh, keep that in mind as well. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and turn things over to Carrie. Thank you, Drew. And thank you for joining us today to learn more about the basics of banking. So we're going to start out by asking a simple question. Why do people need banks? At its most ba basic level, a bank is a place to safely keep your money. But beyond the basics, banks usually offer a wide range of products and services designed to make managing your money a bit easier. Retail banks offer a variety of products and services to retail customers. When people think about a bank, they usually think about a retail bank. In every city across the country, there are bank branches that make banking services accessible to the general public. The most common services that retail banks offer are checking and savings accounts, mortgages, personal loans, credit cards, and certificates of deposits or CDs. Before we get started, there is one important note to make that one of the biggest trends in retail banking today is the shift to mobile and online banking. Specifically, banks are adding additional tools and features, such as the ability to put temporary holds on cards, view reoccurring charges, or scanning a fingerprint to log into an account. In order to retain and possibly attract new customers, the online banking and mobile banking has become quite popular. Virtually all of the products and services that are covered today can be and are offered through online banking. So let us begin by explaining what a bank can do for you, starting with deposit products. A transactional account is a type of demand deposit account, mostly referred to as a checking account. It is a bank account that retail banks make available to their customers for the purpose of securely and quickly providing access to funds on demand. They are the accounts that customers will typically use to pay everyday expenses. For example, rent and utilities, groceries, and other store purchases. These are accounts that traditionally use checks as a form of payment. However, with the moves to online banking, they also include debit cards, which we will cover in just a few moments. Money can be deposited at banks' ATM machines through direct deposit or other electronic transfers, or account holders can withdraw funds at banks, also through ATMs, by writing checks or using electronic debit or credit cards paired with these accounts. A well-maintained checking account is also an asset to establishing and maintaining credit, which is important if you are considering a big purchase like a car or a house. You can also use your checking account record to get a better handle on your expenses and income and set a budget. These accounts are very convenient for customers and don't normally earn interest However, there are some that will offer a nominal interest rate or other rewards on these accounts. So therefore, it's always best to shop around for the best product that meets your specific needs. Savings accounts are demand deposit accounts used by customers who may not need an immediate need for their funds, 
but may want to ensure that they have quick accessibility in case their financial situation changes. These accounts offer a range of interest rates. However, the rates are typically lower than what a customer could get if they would deposit their funds into a somewhat longer fixed term deposit product. One of the best aspects about savings accounts is how fast you can have access to it when you need money. No matter how well you budget your money, there is always a chance that your financial plan might not work out. A job loss or a sudden medical emergency could leave you wondering how you are going to pay the bills next month. The best way to protect yourself from these situations is to have an emergency fund stocked away. Having some extra money, three to six months worth of your income is a good start, will help to manage unforeseen circumstances without going into debt. A savings account is a great tool to use, especially for this, because you can access your money right away. Saving money on a routine basis can be a difficult habit to form, but it does not have to be. By opening a savings account, you take the thinking and effort out of saving and reduce your temptation to spend that money elsewhere. The amount you choose to save does not have to be large. Most savings accounts can automatically move money from your checking into your savings account each month so you do not even have to think about doing it yourself. Over time, the deposits will add up and do not forget about the interest you will be earning on these deposits as well. It is a great way to maximize the benefits a savings account can offer you. A CD or certificate of deposit is a type of savings account with a fixed interest rate that is usually higher than a regular savings account. It also has a fixed term length and a fixed date of withdrawal known as the maturity date. You can lock up funds in a CD for a term generally between three months and usually can go up to 10 years. Like a savings account, they provide a way to put money away for specific savings goals, such as a down payment on a home, a new vehicle, or a big trip, or just to park funds that you simply don't need for day-to-day -day expenses, all while earning interest and a certain return on your balance. Once you purchase a CD, you cannot access the funds until the maturity date, which is when the entire term ends. Once matured, the owner of the CD can withdraw the funds plus any interest accrued. If you need to withdraw your funds early, you will likely have to pay an early withdrawal penalty. Investing in CDs can make sense if you want to avoid the volatility of the stock market and earn a return that's typically better than other savings accounts. The general rule of thumb is the longer the term the higher the rate of interest that will be paid. Investing in a certificate of deposit is not the quickest way to grow your money, but it offers a guaranteed return and safety that money in the stock market does not have. A CD with a good rate can play an important role in your overall savings plan. By choosing the right type of CD, you can earn a solid return on your money to assist you in achieving your long-term goals. Now, we will cover some of the credit products that banks offer consumers. A debit card is a payment card that lets you make secure and easy purchases online and in person by drawing money directly from your checking or your savings account. You are not borrowing from a line of credit like you would with a credit card. The money on your debit card is your own. You can also use a debit card to access your cash at ATM. Debit cards partner with major credit card brands such as Visa, MasterCard, and Discover to allow you to use your debit card for payment anywhere those branded cards are accepted. Debit cards give you the flexibility of paying with a card instead of writing a check both online and in person. 
It's important to match the cards in your wallet with your spending habits. So take some time to compare your various spending options, like credit cards, debit cards, and prepaid cards. One or a combination of the three can help you gain the flexibility you desire with the seamless access to cash that your daily activities require. A credit card can be issued by financial institutions, which also let you borrow funds, but this is from a pre-approved limit to pay for your purchases. The limit is decided by the institution issuing the card based on your credit score and history. Generally, the higher the score and better credit history, the higher the limit may be. The application and approval process happens almost simultaneously as it is an automated process. The key difference between a credit card and a debit card is that when you swipe a debit card, the money gets deducted from your bank account, whereas in the case of a credit card, the money is taken from your pre-approved limit. By law, credit card issuers must offer a grace period of at least 21 days starting from the day your monthly statement is generated to the day your payment is due before interest on purchases can begin to accrue. Credit cards typically charge a higher annual percentage rate or APR versus other forms of consumer loans. Interest charges on any unpaid char balances charged to the card are typically imposed approximately one month after a purchase is made, unless previous unpaid balances have been carried over from the previous month, in which case there is no grace period granted for new charges. That is why paying off balances before the grace period expires is a good practice when possible. Regular non-secured cards and secured cards when used responsibly, can help consumers build a positive credit history while providing a way to make online purchases and eliminate the need to carry cash. Since both types of credit cards report payments and purchasing activity to the major credit card agencies, cardholders who use their card responsibly can build great credit scores and potentially increase their lines of credit. A personal loan is an amount of money you can borrow to use for a variety of purposes. For instance, you may use a personal loan to consolidate debt, pay for home renovations, or plan a dream wedding. Personal loans can be offered by banks or online lenders. Unlike a credit card, a personal loan delivers a one-time payment of cash to borrowers. Then, Borrowers pay back that amount plus interest in regular monthly installments over the lifetime of the loan, known as its term. Personal loans can be secured or unsecured. A secured personal loan is one that requires some type of collateral as a condition of borrowing. For instance, you may secure a personal loan with cash assets, such as a savings account or a certificate of deposit, or with a physical asset, such as your car or boat. If you default on the loan, the lender could keep your collateral to satisfy your debt. An unsecured personal loan requires no collateral to borrow money. Banks and other online lenders can offer both secured and unsecured personal loans to qualified borrowers. Banks generally consider the latter to be riskier than the former because there is no collateral to collect, and that can mean paying a higher interest rate for a personal loan. A personal loan should help you reach your financial goals rather than contribute to a debt problem, which is why it is recommended using only one when it saves you money, improves your income generating capabilities, or helps increase the value of something you own. One of the biggest investments you can make is when you choose to buy a home. 
A mortgage is a loan provided by a mortgage lender or a bank that enables an individual to purchase a home or property. While it's possible to take out loans to cover the entire cost of the home, it's more common to secure loans for 80% of the home's value, which usually requires the borrower to provide a 20% down payment. There are other programs available as well that require only a 5% down payment if you meet all the requirements. The property itself serves as collateral for the loan. Mortgages are available in a variety of types, including fixed rate and adjustable rate. The cost of a mortgage will depend on the type of the loan, the term, such as 30 years, and the interest rate the lender charges. Mortgage rates can vary widely depending upon the type of product and the qualifications of the applicant. And finally, we will review a few of the investment products a bank can offer to consumers. One administration service generally available is the bank's trust department, and they can help assist you with all of your estate and insurance needs. Estate planning is one of those bank services that focuses all about ensuring your wishes are met after your death. It is important to understand that all estate plans should include a will and powers of attorney. But in many cases, an actual trust has additional benefits beyond what can be accomplished with just the will and power of attorney. Trusts are often funded with a life insurance policy which provides the assets that will be used after the death of the insured will be used for the benefit of the family or other heirs, particularly for parents of minor children. The combination of life insurance and a trust may be the best way to ensure your children have their financial needs met, while also making sure the assets are used in ways you desire. For most, People wanting to leave a legacy, the two assets that come top of mind are life insurance and a home. Although nobody wants to think about death, however, life insurance provides a lot of benefits when it comes to setting up your estate plan. Having life insurance and a trust provides a multitude of benefits. Another administration service a bank can offer is retirement planning, which refers to financial strategies for saving, the investment, and ultimately the distribution of money meant to sustain oneself during retirement. In the simplest sense, retirement planning is the planning that one does to be prepared for life after paid work ends, not just financially, but in all aspects of life. The non-financial aspects include lifestyle choices, such as how to spend time in retirement, where to live, or when to completely quit working. The emphasis that one puts on retirement planning changes throughout different life stages. Early in a person's working life, retirement planning is about setting aside enough money for retirement. But during the middle of your career, it might also include setting specific income or asset targets and taking the steps to achieve them. Many banks provide the option to use their financial advisors for their investments. They may even offer incentives such as lower fees or free checking if you have an investment account at the bank. Many popular investment vehicles such as individual retirement accounts or IRAs, and 401ks allow retirement savers to grow their money with certain tax advantages. It's never too early or too late, although earlier is better, to start retirement planning. Retirement planning is ideally a lifelong process. You can start at any time but it works best if you factor it into your financial planning at your bank from the beginning. That is the best way to ensure a safe, secure, and fun retirement. 
Thank you for your time today, and I look forward to our next webinar, which will focus on budgeting essentials. And excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Carrie. That's all incredibly good information to share. Um, we did get um, a couple of questions here, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. the, the first question, um, <laughs> the first question is, uh, when you were talking about CDs, you mentioned that normally there is a penalty charge if you remove the money early. Uh, why is that? Why, why does the bank charge a penalty if you take what is actually your money out early? Right. That's a good question, Drew. And normally, the way the bank works is that they, they use deposits to lend out money. So normally, whenever you lock into a CD, you lock it in for a specific time period, obviously, and the bank relies on that money to be there for that time period. So the penalty is in place to protect the bank so that the deposits, you know, um, don't put the bank into a position where they were counting for on that money for a long period of time, and then it suddenly becomes short-term money versus long-term money, and they don't have enough deposits then to fund the loan. Okay, that makes sense. Um, speaking of, of lending, the, the other question that we have here is, um, is it better to open um, something like a personal loan or a personal line of credit, or is it better for a person to open a credit card? Or does it matter? Well, I, I think it all depends upon what your needs are. I think there's benefits to both, um, depending upon what you're really looking for. I think um, the line of credit rates are usually lower, um, and they come with higher credit limits. Um, whereas, you know, the credit cards typically charge higher interest rates and fees for cash advances. Um, whereas lines of credits always deal in cash. So I think it just kind of all depends. Um, obviously, as I spoke in, in my um, discussion, that your credit score and credit history have a lot to do with applying for either a line of credit and or a credit card. So depending upon you know, your credit score, your credit history is going to depend upon which product is really going to best suit your needs. All right, excellent. Um, well, I definitely thank you very much for your time today. I know that we have a couple of uh, additional seminars coming up. So uh, next Wednesday, I believe, is uh, a discussion on budgeting. Correct? Yeah, uh, correct. So we're going to so we're going to be talking about budgets, how to create a budget, how to stick to that, and then we have additional seminars coming up uh, every Wednesday throughout the month of August. So uh, we're going to get to see a lot more of Carrie over the next uh, few weeks, and that's a good thing. Uh, so in the meantime, thank you all very much for attending and uh, this recording uh, of the session will actually be available uh, up on our website here in the next uh, day or two. Uh, so if you missed part of the session or you have friends or family that you feel like would benefit from from watching the session from today and they couldn't uh, make it live, uh, we'll have the recording up there for you to be able to watch that as well. So uh, thanks again, Carrie, very much. Appreciate your time today. Thank you, Drew. All right. Have a great day, everyone.